What's going on, y'all? It's your girl, Liz, at City Go Craves, getting ready for this week and big Saturday. I am so happy that you guys are here today to join me in making some thumbprint cookies. If you don't know what a thumbprint cookie is, it's essentially a sugar cookie dough that's been shaped and the interior of the cookie has a jelly filled center. So, we're gonna try them out today. Shout out to the Sugar Spun Run blog for the simple, simple recipe that I will be utilizing today. If you've ever had the Verona cookies from the Pepperidge Farm collection, you know what I'm talking about. It's generally just a little circle cookie filled with jam. It's so, so good, it's so, so tasty, and I'm making them in preparation for Valentine's Day. All right, so stay tuned for the thumbprint cookie, y'all. Let me tell you these ingredients real, real quick before I start getting to work because my butter is ready to be churned, all right? I'm gonna be utilizing a half cup of salt and a half cup of unsalted butter for this, all right? You gotta use what we got. Secondly, I have I got the brown sugar and the granulated sugar ready to go over here. I'm also going to be using an egg yolk. I'm going to be using vanilla extract, as you see, you know my baby right here, bam. And they want us to use all-purpose flour, corn starch, as you see right here, bam, no brand is preferred, you know, use what you got. I'm not going to be using salt in this recipe because I already have the salted butter, very, very important to know. The recipe calls for just unsalted butter, but I'm utilizing salted and unsalted because I ran out of unsalted butter, so we're going to see how this goes. Lastly, I have more sugar, granulated sugar that is, so I can roll the dough in them. And then I have my, obviously, my preserves over here ready to go. So, let's get to work and let me start doing what I need to do. Let's turn these butters and I'm just, and they're already room temperature as mentioned before. I'm going to add them to my sand mixer over here. According to the recipe, she mentions that I can use a handheld mixer as well. My hand kind of hurts, not gonna lie. I don't know what's going on, carpal tunnel maybe, but I'm just gonna be using my hand mixer instead of a handheld mixer today. So breaking this up into about half inch pieces and let me beat this butter until it is super, super creamy. Our butter has gotten creamy as you see right here. Let me give you a closer glimpse right there. I'm gonna start adding the sugars and then I'm gonna keep mixing this, all right? So let's get to work. Brown sugar and then granulated sugar that is, yep and breathe gradually, increasing the speed of the mixer. So this recipe will require a lot of input from you as well. So you see here, I got my scraper. You're gonna be scraping down the sides of your bowl as necessary because it's getting really sticky in there right now just because it's just butter and sugar. So what we're gonna do now is start adding our egg yolk and our vanilla extract. Vanilla extract right here. And I'm gonna be adding about 3 4 teaspoons of vanilla extract. So I got my 1 4 teaspoon right here, let's get to work. Alrighty, so three fourths added onto here. I put my little spoons right here because I'll be utilizing them again. And now my egg yolk. So let's separate the two. The egg yolk ready to go, adding it to our mixer now. And I'm going to keep combining. There's a lot going on right now, y'all. And I'm going to start getting ready to get the dry ingredients ready to go, meaning the flour, the cornstarch. That's about it. So we get two and one fourth cups of all purpose flour ready to go right now. And yeah, let's see how this goes. Let me get them together. I need to mix them in a separate bowl first before adding them to our wet ingredients. All right, guys, so now we have two and one fourth cups of all purpose flour plus our two teaspoons of cornstarch. So just whisk them real quickly and get them prepared because we're gonna start adding it to our large mixer over here. Okay, y'all? So let me just double check real quick what this girl wants me to do. Mixer on low speed gradually add the flour mixture to wet ingredients until completely combined. All right, y'all? So this this dough will seem very dry and crumbly, so be sure to plug occasionally to scrape the sides, like I told y'all earlier. Adding in gradually. Still working on our flour, adding it onto the big mixer, y'all. So now that the dough is ready to go, I'm gonna show you really quickly. Bam, 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 look at that beauty. I'm gonna start rolling it into smaller balls that we will be utilizing to make the cookie. So instructions say that I can scoop the cookie dough into one tablespoon sides balls and roll them super super well so i'm drying my hands super well right now so this won't get any of the moisture from there and putting my rag there all right and i also have my sugar ready to go because i have to roll the balls into the sugar afterwards so really quickly let's get to work and let's make some balls that didn't sound too right but we have to ensure that the dough is round and that there is no cracks or seams in there so i think this looks pretty good what y'all think check that out no cracks or seams. Okay, so I'm just gonna make the bowls first and I'm gonna roll them in the sugar. That's the easiest way to do it so I don't get all these sugar on my hands. So I'm just gonna keep rolling for now and let y'all know my progress pretty soon. 
right, y'all, so we have rolled our dough all into balls, as you see right here. And I made about 19 cookies. It was supposed to yield about 24 cookies, but that's okay. I like my cookies to be a little fat sometimes. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll them in sugar and place them back on this plate because y'all don't hate me for this one. It's gonna be a lengthy weekend bake, y'all. Let me just tell you guys straight up right now, super, super lengthy because we need to put the dough after the sugar is applied into the freezer for 30 minutes before we're able to bake these bad boys. And prior to the baking, we need to add the jelly. So it's gonna be lengthy today, but I'm excited because I love the dumb print cookies. So roll fast, roll fast. No indents. Roll it around in your dough super gently, nothing crazy. I gotta be careful because I got long nails. I realized that I was making a lot of indents when I was rolling my little balls. Not cool, not cool. And I'm just gonna keep doing this till I have to put them in the freezer. We're gonna place them in the freezer, as mentioned before, for 30 minutes before we bake them in the oven at 375 degrees. So let me put them in the freezer now, put my little timer on and get to work. All right guys, so we had a recipe hiccup real quick. Your girl messed up just a little, but we're controlling the situation. The situation is under control. So I have a couple of my cookies right here ready to go. So according to the recipe, the dough should have been shaped and the circle in that should have been input before putting into the freezer. So I misread that, sorry about that, but we are still proceeding and everything is going according to plan. So I'm using this table teaspoon to make the circle in that on my thumbprints. And I'm just pressing ever so gently because this dough is super delicate. In the meantime, I'm also preheating my oven to 375 degrees. And remember, if your cookie tends to separate while you're making this, just push it back together because we do not want any, any jagged edges on these. They need to be very, very perfect for this jelly, all right? No marks anywhere. And I'm shaping them with my fingers, as you see. I'm only gonna make a couple of cookies for the moment, and I'm gonna save the others because I'm gonna use heart-shaped indents for the middle. You'll see that shortly. So I'm gonna start adding the jelly super quick. Remember, I'm using raspberry preserves for this. And she said when you fill them, to fill them all the way to the brim. Oh, the oven is ready. I gotta hurry up. So our thumbprints are ready to go into the oven. These will bake for 11 minutes at 375 degrees. Yes, baby. Oh, I put jelly because they're thumbprints. All right, y'all, so we're almost done. I swear, I swear, I swear. So I know you saw powdered sugar when I had my ingredients outlined on my little table. So I'm using the powdered sugar, and this is not part of the recipe. This is all me. I'm using the powdered sugar to create a little bit of a glaze on top of the cookies. I have it here ready to go. It's super, super thick. And I just use oat milk, about two tablespoons or a little more, and I use about a cup of powdered sugar. So it's waiting here till the cookies are ready, and then we're gonna add the icing on top. So we'll see how it goes. Wish me luck, y'all. I'm excited. All right, y'all, so the thumbprint cookies are done. Do not mind the burn cooking spray on the tray. That is completely normal, but they look great. The heart ones, we try to do it, you know. Shout out to Valentine's Day out here. We try to make them work. Um, some of them did, some of them didn't. Let's see what happens and let's get ready for this taste test. It's breakfast at the City Girl Craze House, so I need to make this super, super quick. And my circular thumbprints came out so beautiful. As you can see, I'm so excited. I can't wait to try them. But first, I'm gonna put the icing on them that I mentioned earlier. And I also try to make heart thumbprints. You know, I tried it. They look pretty cute. They look pretty cute, you know. Shout out to Valentine's Day out here, you feel me? Ooh. It's a heart-shaped thumbprint. So I'm using my little ghetto technique of putting the confectioner's sugar with the milk and I'm going to pipe it on top of the cookie. So let me get a quick scissor. Almost forgot about that. Make a little indent at the bottom of the bag. Actually, you know what? Let me just bite it. All right, so real quickly, real quickly, I'm gonna try a circle thumbprint. Let's see how this goes. Put some quick drizzle on this bad boy. And I gotta hurry up because my child is bugging out. I hear her fighting with her father. And it's nothing perfect, but we're gonna make them nice and cute. Oh. Is the cookie good? Yes. It is? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Do you like the glaze on top? Yes. Is it an exclusive? Yeah. 
All right. Thank you, baby. Check out the thumbprint. All right. Check out the layer, the jelly, and then shortbread, I guess that is. It tastes just like shortbread to me. It tastes just like a beautiful shortbread cookie. And it's super, super delicious. I'm not going to even lie to y'all. It's so good. It's so tasty. I love the addition of the glaze that I added on top of the confectioner sugar. It's definitely a hit. It's so subtle. It's so soft in the mouth. Ugh. I will be making these again. Just saying. Super long cookie to make though, so I don't know. It's up to y'all if this cookie is worth the wait. But for me, it was definitely worth the wait because I've been dying to make thumbprint cookies for a very long time now. They definitely taste better than the Pepperidge Farm cookies, the Verona brand, y'all know what I'm talking about. So definitely check out this recipe for sure. Shout out to them for such an easy and simple recipe. These are definitely hit y'all. And the edges were nice and toasted. Let me show you. So it gave it a nice little taste. Oh, it was so good. But either way, y'all. Let me know what you think. I know super lengthy, <laughs> wake and bake. I apologize about that. But let me know if you guys are willing to make these. Leave me a comment, leave me some feedback. Let me know what you think. All right, y'all, thanks again for watching the thumbprint cookie, wake and bake, all right?